Jennifer King, she's the founder and artistic director of Napa Valley Conservatory Theater and Shakespeare Napa Valley. All things Napa and Shakespeare have to go through you first, right? I would like to think so. <laughs> I, I understand no one is allowed to do Shakespeare in the Tri-County area without first getting a stamp of approval from you. Well, everybody is, and my heart is with them all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have such a great uh, resume. It's it's profound. So back in the old days, I was a critic, uh, reviewer really, for the Bohemian, mm -hmm. and so I was a aware of some of your work yes. right uh, locally and then you just exploded you you are everywhere you're f all across the united states you're in europe you're, you're working with disney this is such a great trajectory congratulations well on, thank you yeah. uh yeah it's been a wonderful life so far yeah um i grew up in santa rosa and uh, in fact, Argo Thompson and I went to high school together, which I think is an interesting is thing interesting. to mention because we had a wonderful theater teacher, Kathy uh -huh. Juarez, who ran actor, founded and ran Actors Theater, and I think that's where we both learned um, how to produce. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and I think what many young theater artists don't understand is that you really have to become your own entrepreneur if you want to work. And you really have to create your own life. When did you come to that revelation? Because it, back in the old days, that notion didn't seem to be uh, as prevalent. Well, I was fortunate that my father uh, was an entrepreneur. He had his own business, and I worked for him for many, many years um, when I was young and then into college. And I think he really taught me that work ethic. What was it, the business? A uh, beauty store and more, which Sonoma right. County audiences will know. They'll That's certainly awesome. know the jingle. <laughs> but I think what was most interesting about um, uh, sort of realizing that I needed to car first of all, my father didn't particularly want me to go into theater. He wanted me to run his business or work for his business, but I was determined to become successful in the field. Right. And while I started off as an actor, I knew that I was not going to really um, be able to pay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'd be able to live if that's the chart I took. And was it always theater? Always theater. It wasn't acting in film, it wasn't... I hadn't, actually, I'd, I'd, I went to USC, yeah. and just somehow the life in LA just didn't groove for me. It's a different life. It yeah. is, and yeah. I went to ACT the following summer, and I just, theater has always been it. It probably, it may always be it, I can't say it will, but it may. Yeah. Uh, and so, um, I just had a, a desire to have this be my life. Yeah. And um, I've always been a person to sort of listen as to where I should go. And so I started off acting and then I directed a piece mm -hmm. and I found that I really loved the control that directing <laughs> offered that you don't have as an actor. And I also found an ease in directing that I hadn't discovered in acting yet. Well, I wonder why. Is it a personality thing? I think it's more of I uh, loved being able to lose myself in the work, mm -hmm. and I could do that with directing, and I loved seeing actors manifest what was in my head. I would imagine you are then immersed in the whole work versus just your part of it. Yes, an and understanding yeah. a creative. I loved working with great lighting designers, mm -hmm. uh, great set designers, and that sense of collaboration I loved very much. What, what is directing in theater? Oh, that's a good question. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think a lot of people understand what a director actually does. You have an existing piece of material and you make it manifest on stage, but there's so much well, that goes into that. And also, you know, one would say you're hurting cats. You could right. say that. But I think that directing for me has changed over the past 20 years. Um, I started off just thinking, you know, working with wonderful people and thinking it's about um, bringing out the best in the actor, right. and then it came to a level of, oh, I've got to actually create a world that is compelling. Right. Um, lately, I'd rather talk about lately, oh, my yeah, work yeah. has really become about collaboration. Okay. And I saw a fantastic production of Tartuffe, and it was the one time where I read the director's notes, and he talked about listening to the room. And I thought, you know, what would happen if I went in and we all created a world together? Mm -hmm. And um, I tested that out for the first time just recently on a production of Pericles. And it was so very exciting because all of the people in the room brought in ideas and the production was stronger because we all had ownership about it. Right. And we also really wanted it to be in dialogue, which was, which was, which was 
happening in the now. Um, because I have a passion for doing Shakespeare, mm -hmm. I'm very interested to how do we connect it to today without putting some sort of conceit on it that actually doesn't tell a story. Fundamentally, directors have to help everyone tell a compelling story. Versus just curtain dressing that makes it seem modern. Absolutely, yeah. and I'm also very interested in what happened. What is the relationship between performer and spectator? Mm -hmm. So how do we engage a modern audience with an older text? And then how do we engage those artists who are on stage with the modern text so it becomes something where both spectator and performer can lose themselves in the moment and, and be transported. And is that a kind of collaboration in and of itself between it the performer? It is, absolutely. Yeah. And that the collaboration does not end. Uh, what's so interesting is to work collaboratively and then know that when the audience comes in, every night it's different because you're collaborating with a new group of energy and how does that affect the play? Yeah, no, it's, it's a, that's a great idea. Yeah, and I, I mean, I, I love it. And so, I mean, it's labor intensive right now because I found myself. Well, I was in uh, performances every night, and every day we met and reworked oh, you're, things. You're also acting in these. No, no, oh, no, no. Okay, just okay. in the audience. Oh, in the, okay, got it. You know, got taking it. notes and then yeah. reworking with the actors and just you know, for for this for this particular Pericles, allowing it to have a true workshop feel. Right. And and just allowing it to always be a living piece that was in dialogue with the audience was very exciting. So there's there's no set and forget it, you know, like you don't direct it and get out and move on. No, yeah. and, 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 and it's just very rich, I think, for the performers, for the audience, and certainly for me, uh, just to know that they're just not coming out and doing things by rote, right. that it is absolutely in the moment. What accounts for this evolution in your thinking? Is it just maturation as a director, as an artist, or are you, are you just organically open to changing your process? Uh, I think that I've always been hung, I've always been curious. Uh -huh. Uh, and I've always felt because I was an actor and I wasn't trained as a director that I uh, was faking it till I uh -huh. made it. <laughs> right. And I, again, based on instincts, I was quite successful. But I think where I've really shifted is by going abroad. I spent the last four years in the UK and then in Berlin. Mm -hmm. And uh, what's most interesting is I went to graduate school at the theater school at DePaul where I met a, a young uh, directing candidate, Jay Skelton. Okay. And you know, I worked with him on two productions as an actor. And, and he went off to have this you know, really great career in Chicago and then became the artistic director of Shakespeare Notre Dame. Mm -hmm. We lost touch. And then I would say 10 years ago, we found each other on Facebook. Of course, yes. Yeah, so, so, so you know, and. Uh, yeah. We were great friends in graduate school and just sort of picked up, you know, cyberly where we left off. And he moved to the UK to pursue a PhD uh, in uh, Shakespeare uh, and actually training the modern actor for Shakespearean text using uh, viewpoints, with his, which is a mu movement methodology. And I said, Jay, if there's any way you can get me over there, get me over there. And so he said, well, I have a project. And what we were able to do is combine efforts and co-direct uh, the comedy of errors together over there. And then that served as the blueprint for our Shakespeare Napa Valley production. There you go. We did yeah. it the following year with uh, As You Like It, and then that served as a blueprint. And ever since then, going over there has been absolutely crucial to my development as a collaborative director rather than a direct Dictor dictatorial <laughs> director, yes. I mean, uh, do you think your previous productions suffered because you're too dictatorial, or? I, I would leave that. I, I, I would leave that for other people to judge. Well, I've got their notes. I'm sure. Uh, you know, I, I mean, there, there, there's. I think that at the heart of it, I have always been. I've always been better by sort of breathing in the actors who I'm working with mm -hmm. and the designers and giving an open space for us to work. I think probably I did that unconsciously. Yeah. I think I'm more conscious now of what I'm doing and what I am hoping to achieve. And I, I'm not sure if I really worked from a strong perspective before, but I will say that I definitely have perspective when I'm working on a piece now. <laughs> That's great. I, I think before I was really interested in how can I have a really great show, and now I'm more interested in what are we trying to do here? That's, that's interesting. Let's come back to that in okay. a second with Jennifer King. She's the founder and artistic director of Napa Valley Conservatory Theater in Shakespeare, Napa Valley. We'll be right back. And we're back with Jennifer King. She's the founder and artistic director of Napa Valley Conservatory Theater in Shakespeare, Napa Valley. 
which is just the tip of the iceberg of everything you've been doing in recent years. And we left off talking about how some training and experiences you had working in uh, England mm -hmm. uh, has informed how you approach theater here in Shakespeare, in particular here in uh, uh, the 707. Directing actors in the UK versus directing actors in America, right? Am, am I perceiving that there might be a difference in technique and style since there's such so much more of a theater culture in my observation? I think that there's more an appreciate. Uh, I think there's just more of a foundation and appreciation of the work rather than convincing, oh, this Shakespeare is going to be really great and need to see it, or this piece of work is really great. It's sort of ingrained in the culture. I mean, Shakespeare was their guy, right? He, but also, I, I, where we're lacking, I think, is. Um, I would call it a cultural literacy mm -hmm. uh, because the arts just aren't supported. And unfortunately, the UK is facing the same thing now. They really? just aren't seeing the same art support See, they I once were. I always got the vibe that the UK was like, well, they, they approach Shakespeare like a painkiller and we look at, look at it as a, as a vitamin. Yes. Right? Like yes. something that's crammed down our throats when we were kids because it's good for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas it's still you know, entertainment. Oh, it's absolutely yeah. entertainment. Just where there was lots of funding in the past to do, pro it's, just, it's not there anymore. Yeah. And they're having to use more of a US model when it comes to producing. Oh my God, what is the US model? Well, I think it's you know getting corporate backing and having to do the work and having to beg and mm -hmm. steal to try and get work done yeah. and I think that's uh, the great tragedy I mean it's been the life that we all you know signed on for but that is what I found was different in Berlin was how much the state supports the arts and you know I, I, I couldn't help but feel that's why there's so much risk taking there and that's why I found the theater so exciting is because it was it, it, first of all it was again part of the culture I went to very strange theater and yet the houses were packed. Really? And it was so great to see. So I would imagine having not to worry about fundraising would mean the houses would be sometimes empty because they're not worried about selling tickets. <laughs> right? no, I, do, I just think it's a fundamental yeah. part of life. Yeah. Like going to the movies, we go to the theater. Right. And, and, and so I, you know, we always dream of that here. It's just not something that we were raised to experience. How do we fix that? Do we fix that? I mean, how do we make theater relevant in people's lives? Well, I think that we have to make, of course, we, we talk about this as arts and schools. It starts with parenting. Um, it, you know, I am, you know, part of the reason that Shakespeare Napa Valley, the, the, the main reason they exist, mm -hmm. uh, Shakespeare Napa Valley and Napa Valley Conservatory Theater, is that I'm a professor of theater at Napa Valley College, and those right. are the resident companies. And, and one uh, of which you started, which one, uh, your Napa Valley Conservatory Theater is yours? Both companies both are, are, are Napa Valley colleges. I just right. helped spearhead their found the, the foundation of both of them. Well, that's so huge. It is. It is <laughs> huge, like... and it really is to provide students and professional actors an opportunity to come together to create work. Mm -hmm. um, I think sometimes we get hung up on what is professional, right. and I'm like, no, we're just trying to do great work. And um, there's something about students coming into it that don't have the baggage right. and then having really great mentor, I call them mentors, but professional actors come in and that, um, again, I keep going back to collaboration, but that synergy creates something that's quite magical yeah. um, for back, lack of a better word. And, um, and I think the reason I bring that up is I think there's got to be someone in our lives that champions the work of theater. Yeah. And I, you know, in my classes, um, you know, I'm not interested in creating the next actor. If that happens, that's great. Right. I'm more, most interested in lighting a fire of passion about theater so every single student will keep it in their lives and know the importance of it and, feels feel that, and that they feel changed somehow. The same with our audiences in the Napa Valley where I primarily work is I want them to have such a tremendous experience that they mm -hmm. want to come back and come back or go to you know, a Lucky Penny production, which is another theater in Napa. And there's a, a, a company called um, Napa Shakes, and they bring work over from the globe. Wow. And that, that it's not just one theater, but all of us are working together to create a culture of theater goers and theater lovers. Now there was like a Cambrian explosion of theater here, uh, like in the mid 90s, yeah. right? And yeah. you were certainly part of that. Yep. And then it seemed to sort of collapse a bit. It, it, do you think that you can bring that vibe back? Is that what you're doing in Napa? Is 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 sort of re-exciting everyone about the possibilities of theater and kind of creating a community around it? Because well, there was such a community here. Back there, in the day. there was. But I think that again, uh, we look at if you look at when the community settles down, mm -hmm. it's a, a byproduct of what happens in our country financially. 
Is it is it that tied to it? There's no like autonomy of the arts from from the economy. Well, people aren't going to buy tickets yeah. unless they have extra money. I mean, I'm being naive and Pollyanna. It just, but it seems to me that I just think that if we yeah. looked at, I mean, we looked at when all the theaters closed. It, you know, I was part of Sonoma County Repertory Theater, right. and it was thriving up until 2007. Right. And there's a reason for that. It was actually thriving up until 2008. It didn't hit us until. Uh, I would say 2010, right. but you know that's when the crisis was hitting big time, and people who wanted to give could no longer give. Mm -hmm. um, I remember being at the Dallas Theater Center when things were very high, pre 9/11. 9/11 hit, and it became a whole new ball game. Right. So you know we have to rely on our community, and if our community is suffering, then theater suffers because we're that tied to our community, and that's how it should be. But then we have to figure out how are we inventive so we keep it in the minds and thoughts of our community that we don't give up on ourselves. What are you doing? What are you doing to make that happen? Well, I'm I am very fortunate that I have, um, I, I have a stable position as a professor. But I yeah. will tell you, it, it got tricky there for a while with the, the latest budget crisis. And I have to say that I had a little black cloud over my shoulder. And I was fortunate to go away right. and go to Europe and get reignited and find my purpose again. And I think that's what we have to do as artists, is we have to go back and find a place that nurtures us. Do we constantly have to renew, renew that? It seems that, that, I think that if, if yeah. I think that if you feel like leaving, you know, that's fine, leave. But I would also ask art, artists in the world to go back and think, why are you leaving? Mm -hmm. And can you find that place in you again that is a child? And as curious, right. and if you're done being curious, I think that's where things get really tough. Right, I know, I can imagine. Yeah, and you see this with students all the time because mm -hmm. you have this this other part of your career as an academic, mm -hmm. right? And it seems to me that you know the academic, ac ac the academy and the arts have always shared a relationship, mm -hmm. and it's not just in terms of tutelage. It seems like it's also a, like a, a, one of the last places that the arts can kind of survive and thrive. It, is there? Am I correct in that observation of the relationship? Or? Well, I think we have an opportunity to stretch the imaginations and think about what is possible, right. rather than thinking about what are the barriers. Right. I mean, there are barriers, but then okay, we have barriers. What does that mean? Let's be creative thinkers together. And there is something about the youth that allows us to um, think beyond because we often, as we get older, Daedalus. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And the last we, time I say I didn't have a white beard, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we, 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 for, we forget when everything felt new. Mm -hmm. And they remind us uh, that it's the first time. Right. And we can steal their life force. And we get to steal their life force. Yeah. <laughs> and it's important that we, we don't kill that life force that is beckoning because we could do that if we're not careful. That is a very good point. Let's come back to that. Mm -hmm. We're talking with Jennifer King. She's the founder and artistic director of Napa Valley Conservatory Theater in Shakespeare, Napa Valley. We'll be right back. <laughs> And we're back with Jennifer King, the founder, artistic director of Napa Valley Conservatory Theater in Shakespeare, Napa Valley. You notice I keep having to hit the page. I know. <laughs> oh my yeah, God, yeah. You such a title. You can always say slash Shakespeare, <laughs> Napa Valley. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, we, you know, we're canvassing a lot of stuff that's going on, mm -hmm. right, in theater and all that. And one thing that interests me about young, uh, aspiring theater professionals, students in, in, at least, is where do they go career-wise? Do they stay in theater, or do they look do they look at theater as an end in itself, or is it really just a catalyst to go on to pursue a career in film, or a career in something else? Is theater is theater the thing, or is it really just practice? What I uh, subscribe to now uh, is that theater is a catalyst for them to discover that they're creative beings. Just straight up. Straight up. Yeah. This is your creativity, and what I try to nurture is okay. It, you may discover you're a painter in my mm -hmm. classes. You may discover you're a writer in my classes. Uh, you may truly discover you are an actor, designer, mm -hmm. but there's something in you that loves this medium. And how do we open that up, crack it open, so that you can explore that? We were talking about the life force issue earlier and uh, the importance about not killing it. Yeah, yes, <laughs> right? yes, yes. How, how, do you, how do you not kill somebody's you know, artistic sort of awakening <laughs> while sculpting it and being their instructor, you have to sometimes tell them that they suck. Well, you do, <laughs> right. and I, you know, I've got some, because I've been there for, because I've been doing this for some time, mm -hmm. my students are finally starting to show up in films, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm starting to see how the work has changed them. So for instance, um, I remember I was doing a production 
eight years ago and there was a young actor and I just thought she doesn't belong in the theater. Mm. She just, she doesn't have it. She stuck with it and stuck with it and is truly to this day one of the most astounding actors I have met. So I, I, I realize to ever tell someone that they don't have it is is beyond a, beyond a sin. Well, it's me, an untruth. It, it sounds like she obviously worked at it. How much is craft? How much is raw talent? It's both. Okay. It, it, yeah. it, they live in dialogue with each other. Some have more, some need more craft. Mm -hmm. Some don't. And so I think that if you have a passion for it, you just study the craft uh, and, you, and you stick with it. Uh, and and they, the other thing that I want to make mention of mm -hmm. is there was a period of time about three years ago or four years ago where I would just walk into a classroom of five years ago and I just went, what am I doing teaching? None of these people are going to go off and make a living at this. This is a colossal waste of my time. Wow. And that's where uh, my friend uh, in the UK said, Jennifer, you have no idea how you're changing lives. Keep theater in their lives. And then when I started to think about the implication of how theater can be a vehicle to do really anything because it opens the mind to creativity. Mm -hmm. uh, now I'm just joyful in whatever we do together. And some of them may turn out to be great actors, but bottom line, I want them to have great lives. Right. And I think theater, for, I, I said, you're in my class, you know, for a couple of hours, let's make it those hours the most rich and creative possible. And that's where I am now. And I know that that makes a difference beyond what we can see. Is being an instructor and, and being a director, I mean, I, I see obviously a lot of crossover professionally how that might work, but are you exercising the same muscles there or? No. Okay. I mean, they're the, the, I have to look at things differently. And I think that's what's very helpful about working with both professionals and with students is the professionals, I actually go to them and I say, am I treating you like a student? Is this a student? What, what are you feeling? Because mm -hmm. when I direct, uh, I, I try to create Again, I don't like that word professional environment because mm -hmm. I don't know what that means. Okay. I guess I would say I, I create a mature environment for people to play. Right. Uh, and Which is I, a nice ironic statement, but yeah. I, I, <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah and I, I, I don't, I don't want to, so I, I try to create a level playing field so that everybody can do their best work. Yeah. I think that's my function as a director where when I'm in the studio, when I'm teaching acting, my job is to really zero in and think about how to expand someone's abilities uh, and open them up. So you go kind of from the macro to the micro. Right. So it's really about personal, it's all about personal development. Yeah. Uh, but when I'm in, when I'm doing, when I'm in an acting class, it really is about working with the individual in collaboration with the other students where I'm, when I'm in uh, the rehearsal hall, I'm working with a group to tell a story for an audience. Right. Two different things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are you a mentor? Do you feel like you've taken on the mantle of a mentor to these uh, That used students? to scare me, yeah. but I think so. And I think right now I'm in a really good place to be. A, now I'm really happy to be a mentor. Yeah. Yeah. You mentioned your high school uh, drama instructor. Yes. Uh, as I presume a sort of mentor. Yes. Have there been others along the way? Oh, absolutely. Uh, as much as my friend Jay would hate me to mention it, <laughs> my friend from grad school who I now work with, tremendous mentor. I. I, mm -hmm. I uh, I, I admire the way he approaches the work, and it's been such a model for me. Um, I, I what does it take to be properly mentored, like to ha to be receptive to that? I think younger artists have a lot of trouble understanding that they can, uh, you know, respond well to a guiding. You know what hand. I'm going to say is, I think that everyone is a mentor. Okay. I mean, I think you asked me that question, and I stumbled on it. I think every, I think my students are mentors for me. Mm -hmm. I think everyone you come across in this work is your mentor if you're open to what can be revealed. Okay. And so I think it's important for students or for other artists to take, again, thinking about the room, is what is in the room that's going to inform me? And if I really listen, and if I'm really aware, I can then expand myself into the work in ways I can't even imagine. How, how do you preserve that vigilance to stay open like that without calcifying? Because, you know, you've done so much. You know, you've got your bag of tricks, right? Oh, yes. How, how do you not let that just sort of take you out of, of growing? I, I think that I have a hunger to be better. Yeah. But I have a hunger to be in the present moment. I have a, uh, I, I, I just am so interested in what we can create in this lifetime and how our lifetime may manifest and that it is mysterious, 
that I just look forward to what will be revealed. And the drive, where do you get the drive? I think it's genetic. <laughs> uh, I think I got it from my wonderful father. Um, and the, the, the father you mentioned that you yes. needed to prove that you can make this work. I, I do, and I think you know he lit that. I, I was, I've often been very bitter about that. But that there's a gift. Right. There, that's a gift. Uh, and I am in love with theater. Uh, I, I go when I, I remember seeing Shakespeare in love. Yeah. And I cried through the whole thing because I'm like, these it's are my peeps. <laughs> <laughs> and then when I saw, you know, slings and arrows, I just, you know, there's just, it's our, it's my tribe and it's my family, yeah. and it is right now. And you know, things. This is going to sound hokey, but mm -hmm. I was in Paris during the terrorist attacks. The recent. Mm -hmm. the, wow. And uh, I think it did do something to me. Mm -hmm. Because people have noticed that I just seem to have this embracement of life. Mm -hmm. I was not in any danger, but there. But I people have noted that there's a change in me mm -hmm. and a real pre appreciation for what we have right now. And I just want to have the opportunity to celebrate that every day. Yeah, uh, that's that's not hokey at all. I think it's you know very valid. Yeah. Yeah. Jennifer King, this has been a rousing, inspiring conversation. <laughs> oh, thank, thank you. Thank you so much for coming. So I hope you come back sometime. I would love to. Yeah. It's so good to see you again. Yeah, and where yeah. can we find you online and your work and stuff? Uh, well, soon look for me because I'm developing a new website, jenniferkingtheaterartist.com. Okay. Excellent. Uh, but you can certainly find me at jenniferkingdirector.com. There's been a shift in my identity. I love it. <laughs> your brand. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That expansion <laughs> is kicking in. Uh, and certainly at both websites for Shakespeare Napa Valley and Napa Valley Conservatory Theater. And, and visit my Facebook page. Yeah. Um, I'm, I welcome any kind of dialogue. That's great. Thank you. Come back. Absolutely. Yeah, good. good. <laughs>